Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we're going to learn how to draw chair conformations and ring flips. If you thought organic chemistry was only about reactions, when you get to this chapter, you're going to realize it's also a drawing class. Chair conformations, boats, ring flips, Fisher projections. Now here's the thing. Even though you're not graded on your art skills, meaning your drawings can be very messy, it still has to be very, very clear and obvious. What do I mean by this? It's got to be very obvious where your chair is, where your substituents lie, and what direction they're facing. So let's take a look at how to draw these molecules quickly and easily, even if you have zero art skills, to make sure you don't lose any points on exams. We'll start with the cyclohexane hexagon. Now hexagons can be very tricky, and it's okay if your molecule does not look perfect like this, but you don't want to be drawing something that looks like that, because in this molecule, it's very difficult to figure out where your carbons are, where the bonds are, and you're going to lose points. Step one, you're going to draw two parallel lines like this. They don't have to be perfect, somewhat next to each other. Step two, place a dot between the parallel lines, one towards the upper opening and the second towards the lower opening. And third, connect the dots. Now look at that. It's not a very pretty hexagon, but it's very clear and very obvious. Same thing works in smaller, so let me show you how to do this quickly. Two parallel lines, a dot above and below, connect the dots. Notice it's a little messy, I kind of missed at the end, but you know what? It's good to go. It's a beautiful hexagon for organic chemistry. Next, we'll look at drawing chair conformations. Your books are using computer-generated graphics, so they're perfect. But when you try to imitate it, you wind up getting something that looks like this, where it looks a little bit like a duck and not very much like a chair. Instead, let's go with a very simple method that will give you a foolproof chair every time. Draw two parallel lines that are slightly offset from each other. In this case, I have the left over the right, or you could have done the same thing right over left. Then we're going to place two dots towards the opening, but like before, the dot over the upper opening is going to go slightly above. The dot below the lower opening will be slightly below. And then once again, we connect the dots. As you can see, it looks nothing like the bow tie structure, and it doesn't look very much like the chairs in your book, but it's very obvious looking at this structure, what is going on. I see which is the carbon facing up, which is the carbon facing down, and I can tell exactly where the other carbons are located. But it doesn't stop there. Once you have a cyclohexane, you need to add in your substituents. I like to start with the substituents at the tips, where the tip gives us the direction. The up tip, as I call this carbon, will have an axial substituent straight up. The down tip will have an axial substituent straight down. You can start with either the up tip or the down tip. Only one of them is needed because then you're going to follow the pattern of up, down, up, down for the axial substituents. Now, if you're uncomfortable with the concept of chair conformations, axial and equatorial, pause this video and go watch my chair confirmations tutorial link below or visit my website layerforsci.com slash chairs to learn about what goes into the chair confirmation. If you're already familiar with that, let's continue. We'll start with the up tip and then alternate the pattern. Up, down, up, already have the down, up, and down. These are my axial substituents and identifying the tip of the chair made everything else fall into place, regardless of drawing skills. Next, we'll add our equatorial substituents, remembering that each carbon has one axial and one equatorial, and that they're facing in opposite directions. So if the axial substituent is facing up, the equatorial substituent has to be facing down, and this allows me to start the same pattern of up, down, up, down, starting with any one carbon where we identify the direction of the axial substituent, put the equatorial substituent in the opposite direction and continue the pattern. Before we do so, let me point something out. I've seen a lot of students lose points by doing this. It appears to be up and down, 
The problem is, if you draw a parallel line, I can't tell if that pink equatorial substituent is facing up or down. And if your professor can't tell, you're likely to lose points. So make sure that it's very obvious for each equatorial position, whether it's facing up or down. And the way you can verify is to draw a parallel line and make sure your substituent is well above or well below. We determine that this is a down equatorial, making this up equatorial, down equatorial, up equatorial, down equatorial, up equatorial. Those are all my substituents. One more thing to point out is the two middle carbons tend to get confusing. If we think about what we're looking at here, this is a cyclohexane. This is a ring that we're looking at straight on. That means this substituent here isn't really facing to the right or left, it's coming directly at you. But if we show it just as a dot, implying a substituent coming out, it's hard to tell what's going on. So instead we offset it slightly to the right or slightly to the left. It doesn't matter so long as we kind of see what's going on and recognize that's an equatorial substituent facing down below the plane of the cyclohexane. Now that you have the basic chair conformation, we want to add substituents, and we want to make sure they show up in the right place. Anytime you're asked to turn a cyclohexane into a chair conformation, don't think about the substituents right away, because trying to take this molecule and force it into a chair conformation is time-consuming, confusing, and often gets messed up. Instead, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start your drawing by completely ignoring the molecule that you're drawing. In this case, we're not told which substituent should be up or down, so we're going to draw just one version of the chair. To do this, we'll start by drawing one random chair. So we have the parallel lines, we have the dot, connect the dots. Once you get comfortable, you can just imagine that dot and connect to an imaginary dot. We have the skeleton. Next, we'll add the substituents. I'll start with the up tip. This is something that I call the turning your brain off part. You're going to spend a lot of time in orgo thinking, but certain aspects are much easier if you just turn off the brain, go with the flow, and prepare for the next step. So find your up tip and just turn off the brain. Go up, down, up, down, up, down. Don't really think about what else is going on here. And then do the same thing for the equatorial substituent. We identify that this is axial up, so we'll start with equatorial down, up, down, up, down, and up. We have a skeleton, now we're ready to turn it into a chair. In order to add the substituents, we want to make sure that we know which substituents go where by relating the two molecules. And to do this, we'll number the carbon chain. It doesn't matter how you number it. This would be incorrect if I'm naming it to make the methyl number one, but I'm not naming it. I just need a reference, something that I can follow to convert one to the other. I decided to number this counterclockwise randomly just because. So we'll have to do the same thing and number this one counterclockwise. It doesn't matter where I start because it's a ring. So I will randomly put the number one here and continue counterclockwise two, three, four, five, and six. Now that I know which carbon on the chair corresponds to the carbon on the flat drawing, all I have to do is identify a substituent, ask whether it's up or down, and place it on the same carbon. Carbon number one has a methyl group on a wedge, which is up, and so carbon number one gets a methyl group up. Up happens to be equatorial, but I didn't know that before drawing the chair, and it didn't matter. All I had to recognize was carbon one has a methyl on a wedge, the wedge is up, find carbon number one, find the position that is up, and add the methyl. The position that is up happened to be equatorial, and so I know the methyl group is equatorial. The numbers tell us what's going to happen. Next, we have an OH group up on a wedge on carbon number three. So we find carbon number three, identify the up position, and hey, that happens to be equatorial. Great. Put an OH group in the up position. And lastly, on carbon number five, we have a bromine on dashes, meaning it's going down into the page. So we identify carbon number five, put the bromine on the down position. In this case, down happens to be axial, and so we have our final substituent. 
If this is your quiz or exam and the lines are all present, do make sure to add in the hydrogens. Otherwise, you may lose points because that line without a hydrogen actually means a methyl group. So we'll throw those in there. And that's it. There you have your chair confirmation. What happens if you're asked to draw the ring flip for the chair confirmation? Once again, we don't really want to look at the chair that we have. Instead, we want to use a simple approach to flip that chair and then do the same thing that we did here by adding the substituents back. The first step in drawing a ring flip is identifying the pattern. Remember to draw a chair, we had two parallel lines slightly offset from each other. And in this chair, the left is above the right. To do the ring flip, we're going to need the opposite chair, so we're going to draw the two parallel lines where the right is above the left. Then we're going to add a dot or have an imaginary dot that we can connect the lines. Same thing here. Notice it's not very neat, might not pass an art class, but it's very obvious for organic chemistry. Next, we're going to do the same thing with the substituents. I like to start with the up tip. So we have up, down, up, down, up, down. Those are axial. Next, we have equatorial, down, up, down, up, down, up. Then we want to number, and this is where you want to be careful. You should definitely practice this with a model kit just to make sure you understand how the ring flip occurs. I show you how to do this with a model kit in the video link below. We can easily do the ring flip on paper by identifying the up tip or down tip carbon and flipping it to the opposite direction. If we grab the up tip, carbon number two, and drag it down, that gives us carbon number two down on the bottom right. We could have done the same thing to carbon number five, the down tip, and drag it up, which gives us carbon number five here. Now the most important part is your direction. If my starting molecule has the numbers counterclockwise, make sure your ring flip is also counterclockwise, otherwise you potentially create the enantiomer, which is not what we're looking for. To number this counterclockwise, we have two, so let's continue three, four, five, six, and one. And here's the best part. We're not figuring out where the substituents are. We're simply letting the numbers direct us. On carbon number one, I have a methyl group in the up position. I don't care where or what is going on with that up position. I simply care about putting a CH3 up position on carbon number one. Same thing for carbon number three. OH in the up position. Identify carbon three. Add an OH in the up position. And carbon five has BR in the down position. So we identify carbon five. Find the down position and add a bromine. Make sure to add in the hydrogens. And that is it. The key thing that I want you to take away from here is that we're not looking at this molecule and trying to recreate it. Instead, we're looking at the pattern within the molecule, identifying where the numbers are, the direction, and using the numbers to determine where I add the substituent rather than trying to visually rotate something in your head that is honestly just going to be confusing. How do you feel about drawing chair confirmations? Are you ready to do some practice problems? First, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, then click the subscribe button and bell icon so that you don't miss any of the new videos. Then go try the chair confirmation practice quiz, which you can find on my website along with the entire chairs tutorial series, layerforsci.com slash chairs.